You walk towards the dark entryway when suddenly a tall blue figure emerges. It's Huggy Wuggy, and he's here to hug you, never stop, and then he's gonna squeeze you until you pop. An alarm blares as you flee into the conveyor belt system, the blue abomination close behind. The duct slams closed behind you, and for a moment it seems like you might be safe. You continue forward when suddenly you hear loud crashes ahead of you. You are not alone in the vents. Huggy Wuggy emerges from the other side of a grate, frantically trying to get at you. You keep moving. You continue forward when suddenly you find yourself face to face with the blue demon. As you flee, you hear the loud crashing bangs as they chase you. He's above you, below, to the side. And now, he's right behind you. Mommy has been hunting us relentlessly throughout Playtime Co. We flee down a long hallway, launching the grab pack hand at the door to open it. Scanning? You hear something behind you. You turn to find Mommy Longlegs covered in dirt and rapidly approaching you. You turn back to the door. Open faster, damn it, please! Mommy is getting closer. She's almost upon you when the door finally slides open. You barrel into the room, only to find that it's a dead end. Mommy enters and begins to bear down on you, but her hand is caught in a shredder. On instinct, you pull the lever and activate the motor, dragging the pink evil to a horrific demise. What have you done? You make me part of him! You can't do this to me! Now compare that to the chase sequences in Security Breach. And do not worry, they cannot <laughs> find you while we are together. Hi. Okay. Well, last parting you gift, I out, guess. Rugby. I'll try to get in there. Whoa. <laughs> I'd like to think that if this was a little more high fidelity, that was Roxy just running so fast in the elevator doors, it like Looney Tunes just like she left an imprint of her whole face and arms stuck into the elevator door like wonk. I was wrong about Poppy Playtime. I wasn't wrong in platforming Ecker Coaster's allegations against Mob Games. His experiences were very real, and he had a right to be heard. Afterwards, I spoke with Mob Games CEO Zach Bell, and I was ultimately willing to give him the benefit of the doubt that this wasn't a mistake he'd make again. Since then, things have been quiet, and that's good. We all hope that there's no more drama, and that we can all buy Chapter 3 in confidence. No, I was wrong in being so critical of Poppy Playtime's gameplay. Honestly, Poppy Playtime Chapters 1 and 2 are exactly the type of horror game that I enjoy most, and I think Security Breach would have been better had it adopted a more linear, scripted approach just like Poppy Playtime does. In fact, I'm optimistic that Steel Wool might do exactly this in the upcoming Ruin DLC. See, I'm a big scaredy cat. I've played the Huggy Wuggy chase sequences more times than I can count, but they still get to me, even today. The way he first emerges is terrifying. He's huge, and his design is just uncanny. The whole segment really gets my heart pounding, as if I'm actually being chased by an animal or something, and few games really do that to me. Huggy doesn't simply follow behind us as we flee. He weaves around us, popping up ahead, cutting us off, and redirecting our movement. The tension is controlled incredibly well. There's a terrifying confrontation with Huggy, followed by a brief period of safety before Huggy's banging footsteps return. Moments later, we find ourselves face to face with him yet again. Like Poppy Playtime, the Five Nights at Freddy's series has always been super in your face with its scares. The moment you open up FNAF 1, you're greeted with a creepy render, and upon pulling up the camera panel on the first night, you're immediately face to face with Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica staring hauntingly back at you. When you die, the jump scares are loud and animated. Bonnie, Chica, and Freddy's heads bobble around frantically in what are now perhaps the most iconic jump scares ever. This trend continued throughout all seven OG FNAF games, and the FNAF community found themselves eagerly awaiting Security Breach, the first fully 3D free roam FNAF game. Unlike the crusty old animatronics of old, the Glamrocks have had a full glow up courtesy of today's sponsor, Manscaped.com. I came for ye booty! But I have no means by which to shave my fazballs. No worries, Freddy. Jump into the ball pit with the new performance package by Manscaped. First is the Lawnmower 4.0, a waterproof cordless trimmer built with advanced skin safe technology, which helps reduce nicks and cuts on your most sensitive areas. It even has this awesome LED light on it, which is helpful for those hard to reach places. You can even shine it on Foxy to get rid of him. Do you find yourself withered and stinky? Well, worry not, my friend, because the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Toner Spray will get you smelling nice. That be treasure, you know. 
New to the collection is the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer, which trims nose and ear hair. Obviously, the Weed Whacker has 360 degree rotary blades and the same skin safe technology as the trimmer, making it fitting for even the most sensitive among us. Manscaped goes above the waist too with their new and improved Shears 2.0 Luxury 6 Piece Stainless Steel Nail Kit. Every guy out there needs to add Manscaped to their wish list this season. For a limited time, you'll also get two free gifts the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti Chafing Boxer Briefs. Arr, so much more spacious in here! Go to manscaped.com and use promo code THEFTKING to get 20% off plus free international shipping, plus two free gifts. Thanks so much to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Arr, I came for you, booty! While we were waiting for Security Breach, a new challenger emerged, and overnight it quickly became the trendiest mascot horror game. Poppy Playtime Chapter 1 came out of nowhere, and it surprised everyone. While many, including myself, rightfully criticized the game as being a glorified walking simulator that probably didn't justify its $5 price tag, the Huggy Wuggy chase sequence near the end is so intense, I've played it more times than I can count, yet it still puts me on edge whenever I come back to it. Poppy Chapter 2 is even more impressive in this regard. The endgame chase sequence with Mommy Longlegs is really well done. She feels like a threat, and she's quite intimidating. Like FNAF and Bendy before it, Poppy Playtime creates cute recognizable characters, but then when the horror begins, these creatures become scary. Sure, Security Breach's animatronics are also cute looking and silly, but they never really become threatening. They just awkwardly and haphazardly chase you before losing interest and meandering away. Even after they become withered and broken down, they don't really get any scarier. If anything, I just kind of feel sorry for them. Please no. Oh, Why this. Are you oh. I I don't know. Why are you climbing on that box? While Poppy Playtime Chapter 1 is mostly devoted to building tension for the showdown with Huggy, Chapter 2 does give us quite a bit of time to get to know Mommy Longlegs. She introduces us with her cutesy side, yet her insanity is made readily apparent by her ominous warning at the start of the game. And eat your insides while you're still alive. Despite Mommy's schemes, we prevail time and time again, causing her to grow more and more frustrated. She becomes less cheerful and more aggressive, and when we finally manage to break out of her twisted games, she goes completely berserk. Uh, how dare you disobey me! Poppy Playtime really sells Mommy Longlegs' insanity. Between the outstanding voice performance and the detailed, expressive animations, she comes off as absolutely nuts, and it's terrifying. That's how you sound. That's how you sound. Watching her cheerful facade collapsing into a ruthless monster is a cool, exciting little character arc, and by giving her characterization and a meaningful backstory, we can understand how she ended up this way. She's scary because we know why she's so insane and angry. She actually has a relationship to the player character, a former employee of Playtime Co., and it makes sense that she'd be acting spiteful towards us. You worked here, so if anyone deserves to die alone, it's you. In comparison, Security Breach's Glamrock animatronics are really phoning it in. They just don't give you the sense that they care all that much about capturing you. <laughs> Look and jump here, here, here! There's a door! Oh god. Oh no, 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 no! Okay. Now we've reached a point of negotiation. I see that you have, uh, noticed my handsomeness. That's not what you said. It's no secret that I've been critical of Poppy Playtime in the past. One of my earliest videos lamented that Chapter 1 failed to utilize its mechanics in any interesting way, and I presented some very public allegations against the developers behind the game. To this day, I still think Poppy is overrated relative to its popularity, but I fear that moment to moment, it's a strictly superior game compared to FNAF Security Breach. It's really fun and scary while it lasts, and for what it's worth, that's all that matters when it comes to a horror game. Poppy does 3D horror better than FNAF has so far, and surprising as it may sound, I think FNAF could learn a lot from its younger sibling. The truth is, Poppy Playtime has a lot going for it, and it would be foolish to ignore all the things that Mob Games did right in chapters 1 and 2. It's true that Security Breach is a massive game with copious characters, dialogue, and lore. 
It drops the player into the massive Pizzaplex, which we're free to explore, discovering countless secrets, easter eggs, and even a few minigames. On first impression, it appears that the game has a ton of variety. However, none of Security Breach's sequences even come close to Poppy's best. You can't tell me with a straight face that anything Gregory experiences is more memorable than the Huggy Vent Chase or even the Pug -a Pillar statue section. Security Breach's best moments feel downright deflated compared to Poppy's throwaway minigames. Seriously, Wacka Wuggy just has you sprinting in a circle listening for Poppy playtimes and bopping them on the head as they come at you from the walls. Is this especially compelling gameplay? No, it's Poppy playtime. However, it is scary. It isn't horrifying, but it's definitely nerve-wracking to hear the scratching sounds as the enemies approach. Whenever one is about to attack, it emits a clicking noise before, well... <laughs> the section is very overwhelming, and while it's straightforward, it does get your heart pumping and you're relieved when it's done. It plays to mob game strengths in animation and audio design, and it's a satisfying, if uninspired, segment. Now compare that to Security Breach's final boss fight against Burn Trap, where you casually press one of three buttons while Afton haphazardly walks around. Compare it to the Monty fight where you just run around a catwalk for a few minutes filling up a bucket. There's just no impact to these sequences. Nothing you do in Security Breach feels like it has any weight or meaning to it. Even Poppy Playtime's implementation of Simon via musical memory is at least cool to look at. It's a neat environment that throws some cool curveballs at you that might make you panic a bit. The threats are animated and apparent. Now compare that to Security Breach's Simon implementation which is literally as bare bones as it gets. Even worse, the sequence is rehashed over and over again throughout the game without any changes. It's weird because Steel Wool did such a good job with the robot maintenance sections and Help Wanted. With more time, they surely could have made installing the broken parts into Glamrock Freddy a lot more interesting and cool, but this is what we got. Next, look at the game's climaxes. Poppy Chapter 1 concludes with the aforementioned incredible Huggy Wuggy chase sequence. We pull the box down on Huggy and send him to his supposed death before unlocking Poppy's case. It's cool. You opened my case. Chapter 2 ends with one of the most incredible sequences I've ever seen in a horror game. So many horror games make the mistake of designing a chase sequence that never compels the player to look at the thing that's chasing them. <laughs> Typically, in a first-person game, the player moves very slowly while facing backwards, so when something is after you, you just book it and run forward. You don't have time to glance over your shoulder. A good example of this is the DJ Music Man sequence in Security Breach. This is one of the game's few fully scripted encounters, yet it doesn't leverage that fact at all. You barely get to see Music Man as he chases you, which is embarrassing because the dude is freaking huge. Even the regular Music Man who chases you through the vents gives you zero incentive to look back at them. You just hold forward and get to the end of the vent. More often than not, in Security Breach, looking behind you during a chase simply gets you killed. Poppy Playtime, on the other hand, scripts its chase sequences in such a way that you're often turned around and forced to look back at the monster. Mommy and Huggy both manage to get in front of you several times, and it adds to the cinematic intensity of these moments. It reminds you that these things are faster than you and that they don't necessarily have to follow the same path that you did. It's scary. Some of you might be thinking, yeah, but Huggy and Mommy do follow the same path every time, and that's true. Poppy is a linear game, the chase sequences play out the same way every time, and the puzzles usually only have one solution. The game is never going to surprise you on subsequent playthroughs. Huggy isn't going to suddenly do something different one day, he's always going to chase you. In contrast, almost all of Security Breach's encounters utilize cutting-edge dynamic AI, with the enemy animatronics responding organically and believably to your movements. The problem is that the dynamic AI sucks and the sequences aren't exciting. They aren't exciting on the first playthrough, let alone subsequent ones. Ones. Like this, please. Uh, give me in, give me in. Freddy! Freddy, you bitch! Freddy! It's possible to build an AI system that can do more than just chase behind the player, but it's really hard. Steel Wool obviously couldn't do it despite their substantial resources relative to most indie developers, and I'm skeptical that this type of system could ever produce an experience as immersive and scary as something fully scripted like Poppy Playtime. Security Breach's enemies are always limited to just chasing behind you. When we crush Mommy Longlegs in the Shredder, it's at the end of an incredible chase sequence, and it happens moments before she kills us. Compare this to how Chica gets crushed in the trash compactor. You just push the button and it fades to black into a cutscene. From an immersion standpoint, point, this isn't even close. Poppy is just better. It's more visceral and brutal and intense. I get that Security Breach is a much bigger, more open game. It gives the player more choice in how they tackle obstacles and what order they do things in. It's not like Poppy where they can design the game around a single linear path. 
For that reason, it's just not realistic to expect FNAF's moment-to-moment -moment scares to live up to the much shorter, more focused Poppy playtime. And that's exactly why they shouldn't have made Security Breach such an ambitious, massive, free-roaming game in the first place. They should have made something more like Poppy that emphasized really memorable scripted sequences that completely blew our minds. Even if the game was only a third as long, I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more. Imagine Burn Trap or Circus Baby chasing you with the same fidelity that Huggy or Mommy does in Poppy Playtime. Imagine in a sequence like this, but with FNAF characters in a FNAF setting. We even got a small taste of this with The Glitched Attraction, a 3D first-person FNAF fan game that uses a lot of Security Breach assets, but in a game that's much more linear and curated. I actually suspect Poppy Playtime was probably a big influence on The Glitched Attraction, and the latter is a much better fan game because of it. Inevitably, some people will argue that scripted, linear games like Poppy lack replayability, that they're the same every time and will inevitably get old. Sure, they'll be fun the first time, but subsequent playthroughs will reveal just how shallow they are. This is true, but Security Breach's AI-driven dynamic gameplay stopped being fun after an hour, let alone a second or third playthrough. I'd rather have one awesome experience than a mediocre one that stays equally mediocre if I choose to play it again. Plus, as I said before, I've played Poppy Playtime countless times, and I still find these sequences fun and intense when I go back to them after a break. Oh my god, it's a huggy wuggy, no! A horror game is good if it's fun and scary relative to its price point. At 10 bucks for chapters 1 and 2, Poppy Playtime isn't bad value. You get 2 to 3 hours of highly polished, well playtested, highly cinematic sequences, and that's a lot more than I can say I got out of Security Breach. I can go back and play Poppy today, and I'll probably go through the whole thing just because it's fun. When I try to do the same for Security Breach, I get frustrated and bored within the first 45 minutes. I was really critical of Poppy Chapter 1 shortly after it came out, but mostly in the sense that I felt it left a lot of potential on the table. It introduced neat mechanics and excellent cinematic chase sequences, but it didn't mix the two together at all. Then I met Ecker Coaster and I learned about the controversy regarding the executives at Mob Games, and as much as I always try to evaluate games based on their merits as games alone, I think I was a little harsh on Poppy Playtime. I still think my criticisms of the game are valid, and I agree that Chapter 1 alone didn't quite justify the praise and hype it was receiving, but Chapter 2 was really good. It wasn't perfect, but it addressed most of my core complaints with the first game, and I had a lot of fun playing it. As I said at the start, I've come to realize that Poppy Playtime is exactly the kind of horror experience that I prefer. It's short and linear, but as a result, it's able to pace itself and its scares in a way that a more open game never could. Its shorter duration means that Poppy never outstays its welcome, it never frustrates the player or tires them out. There may not be as much of it, but everything that is there is quality. I think FNAF made the wrong call taking Security Breach in such an open, non-linear direction, and I'm hopeful that the upcoming Ruin DLC will emphasize tighter, more scripted sequences than the base game did. It's a free DLC, so there's no real expectation for Ruin's length. Steel Wool could get away with a much shorter, more compact, but richer experience, and I think I'd enjoy that a lot more. I'm shocked that I'm saying this, but I hope that the upcoming FNAF games are more like Poppy Playtime. Wow, who would have thought? I admit, I'm excited for Poppy Chapter 3, and I'm excited for the upcoming Project Playtime multiplayer game. Assuming that there aren't any more scandals, I'm planning on buying them both and playing them, and I hope more games take inspiration from Poppy's linear, highly scripted, but incredibly high fidelity style. Doesn't everyone prefer a short, awesome roller coaster over a big, empty playground? Thanks for watching, and thanks again to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Remember to use code THEFTKING for 20% off the Manscaped Performance Package.